The University of Texas was represented really well at Big 12 Media Days, and we discuss on today's episode of Locked On Longhorns. You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked on. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. And on today's episode of Locked on Longhorns, we are discussing Big 12 Media Days. I react to Steve Sarkeesian's comments, my reaction to some of his favorite comments in the first segment. In the second segment, I'm reacting to some of my favorite comments from the Longhorn players. And last but not least, Melvin Hills, the latest commitment to your favorite football team. We discuss all of that and more on today's episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you're watching on YouTube and you enjoy the show, as always, please like, please subscribe. I'm thankful for your support. Also, shout out to all my Louisiana people. Fun fact, I was born in Louisiana, even though I was raised in Texas. So shout out Arch Manning, Derek Williams, Melvin Hills, all my Louisiana animals, and of course, all my Texas people. Hook them. All right. So we're talking about Big 12 Media Days, and I thought that the University of Texas was represented really well in their last Big 12 Media Days ever. I thought that Steve Sarkeesian's uh, press conference was really good, and he gave some really, in- uh, really good insight into this Texas football team this season. And I thought the players did a really good job of, you know, answering questions from all of the different uh, media outlets. You know, I thought Jade Barron, Jalen Ford, Quinn Ewers, Xavier Worthy, and Jordan Whittington represented the program really well. And it's easy to see why everybody's so excited about this Texas football team in 2023. So in the first segment, I'm going to be reading some of my favorite questions and comments from Steve Sarkeesian and giving my reaction. The first question that Steve Sarkeesian was asked following his open opening statement was Steve Talking about that SEC talk, do you expect this season at all to be awkward? Just kind of going through it with the SEC talk in your exit. Steve Sarkeesian says, it won't be awkward for us. I can't speak for anybody else, but it won't be awkward for us. We've got a roster full of players who, quite frankly, came to the University of Texas to try to win a Big 12 championship. We've got one more opportunity to do that, and I think our guys are focused on that. And so it won't be awkward from our end, but like I said, I can't speak for everybody else. I wish I could just put a fire emoji on the screen. I thought this answer from Steve Sarkeesian was just straight heat, right? What would be awkward about going to the SEC for us? We're focused on this year in 2023 in the Big 12. And then we're moving on to a better and higher paying job. If you were going to a better and higher paying job, would your last day be awkward? I doubt it, right? So while everybody else in the media and everybody outside of the Texas and Oklahoma fan base is trying to skip steps and put us in the SEC in 2024, We're focused on winning games in 2023 in the Big 12. Everybody is assuming that Texas has one foot out the door, but that couldn't be further from the case. This staff has done a really good job in terms of making sure this team is focused on the task at hand. Right now, they're focused on the Rice game and handling business out of conference and in the Big 12 week by week. So everybody in the media, everybody outside of the Texas fan base can try to skip steps and put us in the SEC already, but we're living where our feet are. We're going to take this season week by week, and we're focused on the ultimate goal, which is winning the Big 12 championship in our last year in the Big 12. And y'all could try to put us in the SEC, but y'all got to deal with us in the 2023 season. Love that answer from Steve Sarkeesian. That was straight heat. The second question he was asked that I'm responding to on the podcast was he talked about, he was asked about, you know, the culture and the philosophy of the team going into year three compared to year one, you know, when he took the job. And if you remember, it was less than two calendar years ago, this Texas football team was losing six straight games in a row, right? Their longest losing streak, I think since the fifties. So we've seen a ton of improvement over the last two years, even though we haven't seen the product we desire on the field. So, uh, you know, Steve Sarkeesian started off his answer talking about, you know, the biggest difference is the level of competitive depth they have and how when you walk into practice, you're going against players in the two deep that are just as talented as you or maybe even better. So that's how he started his answer. I'm going to skip down a little bit. And he said, ultimately, when you go to practice, the guy lining up across from you is a quality player and a quality opponent. And so, again, that's pushing you to be the best that you can be. But you do it out of respect. I was talking to the team earlier today about how proud I am of the culture they've developed. It's one thing for me to come in and have an idea of a culture and what I want it to look like and for them to buy into it. It's another to not just buy into it, but to elevate it. I think that's what they've done. This team is different. They have a different look in their eye. 
They look different on the hoof. They interact with one another differently. I've used the adage, I feel like this team is on a mission because that's the approach they have every day that they show up in the facility. I love this answer from Steve Sarkeesian. And like I said, we have seen such a culture shift in the last two years. I know he's 13 and 12 on the field, but I have all the confidence in the world that Steve Sarkeesian will get the ship right at the University of Texas. And when you look at this roster, I talked about it yesterday on the podcast, how people are saying this may be the most talented roster since the two teams that went to the national championship game in the mid to late 2000s, right? There's a ton of depth on this football team, and they have all of the pieces staff-wise and talent-wise to go win the Big 12 this season. But as we know, it doesn't all happen on the field, right? It has to happen behind the scenes in the locker room in practice, right? It's a 365 a day year job to try to win conference championships and national championships. And you have to have the right type of people in the building to do that. And Steve Sarkeesian has helped build this Texas football program into a winning program, I think, in just three short years. And I think his answer to that question is a testament to the culture they've built at the University of Texas and what we see from the players and all the hype around the program, the way that the recruits and the families talk about the program kind of validate what Steve Sarkeesian is saying about the culture, not only being built at Texas, but being elevated at Texas since he took over. The next question I'm responding to from Steve Sarkeesian and his comments were about Quinn Ewers and his development going into the 2023 season. And we've talked a bunch about Quinn Ewers being better. And it's easy to say, Oh, Quinn Ewers will be better because he's in the second year of Steve Sarkeesian's system, right? But what does that development actually look like? What does being better actually look like? I think Steve Sarkeesian did a really good job of detailing that, right? So he's talking about Quinn Ewers' leadership, and he mentioned the Oklahoma game, how he came back from injury from the Oklahoma game. May not have been 100%, but he goes out and plays really well, right? And, you know, everybody's kind of hyping him up. And then Iowa State goes how it goes, and then Oklahoma State goes really bad. And if you notice, after the Oklahoma game, Quinn Ewers deflected praise. It was all about his teammates, right? But in the Oklahoma State game, he put the blame on himself. And Steve Sarkeesian talked about that was leadership, right? So he says, I think right then you found out the type of leader that he is. What he did coming into this offseason is continue just to pour into what he needs to do to be the best quarterback for the University of Texas. I said, what does that development look like? He did a really good job of outlining it right here. The result of that is we've seen his body composition change. We've seen a level of maturity change. We've seen him really dialing in and understanding schematically what we're trying to do to offensively change. We've seen him from a morale standpoint, speaking up in team meetings, speaking up on the field from a work ethic standpoint. I think he's earned the respect of his teammates throughout this time and throughout this process. One of the biggest reasons we're excited for this Texas football team in 2023 is the development and maturation of Quinn Ewers. And like I said, Steve Sarkeesian just gave us really good insight into what that development looks like for Quinn Ewers. I think going into 2023, Quinn Ewers is starting to make that transformation from really talented player with a ton of arm talent to franchise quarterback. And if Quinn Ewers can be a franchise quarterback in 2023, that bodes really well for the Texas football team because franchise quarterbacks are the ones that hold trophies at the end of the season. A quick word from our sponsors, and then we're going to talk about some of the comments from the players and my reaction to those. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets of up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200. You can spend betting everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. You can also bet on the Rangers to win the AL West all on an app that's safe, secure. It's super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. So in the second segment, I'm going to react to some of my favorite comments or one of my favorite comments from each of the players that stepped up to the podium at Big 12 Media Days. And unfortunately, I got these uh, answers from inside Texas. I didn't have time to watch on YouTube and watch the press conference myself. I also didn't have time to write down all of their answers on my notepad that I use for the show. So inside Texas wrote down all of their answers and that was really good for me. So I'm starting with Jade Barron and my favorite quote from him yesterday was Jalen Catalan. Y'all are going to get the best version of Catalan, the best anyone has ever seen. And when I did the episode yesterday on Locked on Longhorns, I graded the depth at each position. 
and every position on the Texas football team got at least a B in terms of their depth, but safety and tight end. The reason I gave them C's is because I said that if you were to lose JT Sanders or if you were to lose Jaron Thompson or Jalen Catalan, I feel like that completely changes your football team. Not to say that you can't still go out and win the Big 12, not to say that you can't still go out and be really good. But JT Sanders is a completely different tight end than Gunnar Helm. He just brings a lot more to the game. I think Jalen Catalan and Jaron Thompson bring a lot more to the game than Michael Taft, Keaton Crawford, and all of the players behind him. And when you look at Jalen Catalan, we may be having a conversation at the end of the season if he can stay healthy. Who was the best player on this football team on the defensive side of the ball, Jalen Ford or Jalen Catalan? He's that good. All SEC can come down in the box, has great instincts, hits violently and can also play the two deep or the one deep safety in zone. He's just such a good player, can cover in man. There's really not anything that Jalen Catalan can do. I've said a million times on this podcast, the only question mark about him is his health. If he can stay healthy and he'll be one of the best players in the country, definitely one of the best defensive players in the country, has a chance to be a first team all Big 12 safety this year. And this Texas defense will be one of the best units in the country if you can get the majority of the games played from Jalen Catalan because he might be the most talented and best pure football player on this defense right now. And that's saying a lot when you have an All-American and Jalen Ford. He's that good. And Jade Barron saying we'll get the best version of Jalen Catalan we've ever seen Gives me goosebumps. Jalen Ford. This quote is from him. Just have seen a lot of guys understand that the room, the linebacker room, even though we lost DeMarvey and Overshone, that the level of the room shouldn't drop. I think a lot of guys have understood that and a lot of guys have put in the work they need to so they can get on the field. And when it's their time, seize the opportunity. I have a lot of confidence in everybody in that locker room. I just love Jalen Ford. Um, you know, I love his story coming from a three star to an all American. Um, and I love what he's done for this Texas football team. And I love, you know, there's been a couple pieces this off season on how he stepped up as a leader. Right. And I think you can just see it. He just like emulates leadership. Right. He looks like somebody you want to follow on the defensive side of the ball. And I really love this quote because he's right. Right. If the University of Texas wants to get to that point to where they're at the top of college football every year, you can't. Be in a situation where you're not able to replace great players with great players, right? Texas has to get to the point where they're replacing some of the best players in the country with some of the best players in the country. And going from 2021 to 2022, you didn't lose a lot of high-end talent from the roster, right? Nobody got drafted, and I don't think anybody hit the transfer portal that Texas really missed, right? Going from 2022 to 2023, you lost B. John Robinson, Roshan Johnson, Jamarvian Overshone, and more, right? And so how does the linebacker room deal with that? And We've said even without Bijan Robinson and Roshan Johnson, this running back room will be fine because there's a ton of talent in there. But we haven't spoke about that way in terms of we haven't talked about the linebacker room in that way. But with Jalen Ford, Mo Blackwell and David Bender, that experience. And you have Anthony Hill, Leonga LaFowle, Samaj Burrell and Darion Gallette behind those talented leaders in this linebacker room. I think they have a chance to be just as good as they were last year, if not better. So I love this quote from Jalen Ford. He's shown a ton of leadership. And I love the fact that they're not using losing DeMarvian Overshone as an excuse, saying we should match the production we have this year as last year, even without a second round pick on this Texas football team. I love that answer from Jalen Ford. He's a hell of a leader and he will win Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year this year. Xavier Worthy, this might have been my favorite answer in the entire press conference at Big 12 Media Days. I feel like I took a big step in maturity. After last season, I took a step away to fix myself mentally, emotionally, and physically. I feel like I've grown leadership wise. They wanted me to be this leader. I just had to be that. Steve Sarkeesian told me I need to make big plays and communicate with my teammates. That's what I'm going to do. I love this answer so much from Xavier Worthy because we know that last year was a down year from Xavier Worthy. And I think it was a down year from Xavier Worthy on and off the field. On the field, you know, there were times where he just didn't look like he had a ton of effort. You know, there were times on the field where he was frustrated and pouting and it looked like Maybe he was quitting on his teammates or, you know, showing up Quinn Ewers or Hudson Carr when he didn't get a perfect deep ball. Right. You know, we remember all of the USC rumors and there was a lot of smoke last year, even more smoke than there was the year prior. It really felt like, you know, Xavier Worthy had one foot out the door. You know, going back to the last segment, it really felt like he was just going through the motions and it was a foregone conclusion. He was going to end up at USC. And a lot of that was probably a lack of accountability. Right. And not saying that, you know, he wasn't dealing with things. Obviously, he was going through, you know, a broken hand. And there were a lot of times where he's running down the field probably wide open. And he was getting missed. I know that's frustrating as a wide receiver because you feel like you can help the team. But I think Xavier Worthy had to look in the mirror and say, how can I help this Texas football team? What am I doing? 
that's contributing to us losing five games when we're more talented than that, right? What can I do to be a better receiver? What can I do to be a better leader? What can I do to be a better teammate? What can I do to make sure that this Texas football team wins the Big 12 in 2023? And what can I do to make sure I finish what I started when I enrolled at Texas in 2021 instead of taking what would look like the easy way out and going back home and going to USC for your third year in college? So I love the fact that he addressed this. I love the fact that he said, you know, I wasn't in the right place last year mentally, physically, or emotionally. And I wasn't as mature as I needed to be for this Texas football team coming into the 2023 season. Not only is he taking it upon himself to be a better football player and be the wide receiver that this Texas football team needs, but he's taking it upon himself to be a leader and the leader that this Texas football team needs in 2023. I expect to see a breakout season, not 2021 breakout, a real breakout season from Xavier Worthy. And I loved his comments and I love the fact that he was vulnerable and said that he was immature and said that he wasn't in the best place in terms of his physical, mental and emotional health. But I expect to see a lot better version of Xavier Worthy in 2023. And it took such a big step for him to say that on pretty much a national stage at Big 12 Media Days. You don't know who's going to hear those comments. So really big season coming from Xavier Worthy. I'm excited to see the growth, not only as a football player, but as a man. Jordan Whittington, we haven't won the Big 12 yet, so I wouldn't say it's about time. When we get to that point, then yeah. But right now, we're focused in the offseason on building the team that can actually go and do those things. And I think we're moving in the right direction. I've said on the podcast before, championships are won in the offseason. Yes, you have to go out there and play the games and win the games and beat the opponents that are in front of you, that are in front of you. But championships are won in the offseason, right? Spring practice, you know, building a camaraderie with your teammates, uh, you know, summer workouts and then fall camp. Those are when championship teams are built, right? And this team is focused this offseason on winning the Big 12 in 2023. Like I said, it doesn't matter where the media and where Texas detractors were put want to put Texas, right? We're focused on the 2023 season. So everybody's saying, oh, Texas already has one foot out the door and they're going to the SEC in 2024. Everybody's saying, oh, Texas is the most talented team in the conference by far. And there's no question in my mind they'll be in the Big 12 championship game in December. If they're not in the Big 12 championship game in December, it's a failure. Everybody wants to fast forward to December or July 1st, 2024. And like I said, Steve Sarkeesian, the and his staff and the leaders on this football team are saying no we're focused on 2023 we have a task at hand we want to win the big 12 and nothing is coming in between us and our goals so like i said i thought that the university of texas was represented really well i thought they absolutely hit it out the park in terms of big 12 media days and i thought all of their answers gave us really good insights into how hard they've worked over the past offseason, how hard they've worked over the last few years to build the culture we now see at the University of Texas. And we should be really excited about the product that's going to be on the field in 2023. A quick word from our sponsors, and then we're going to talk about the latest commitment to the University of Texas, Melvin Hills. All right, so Bo Davis did some work on the recruiting trail. Melvin Hills, 6'3", 270-pound D lineman, committed to the University of Texas yesterday, 6'3", 270, from Lafayette, Louisiana, number 708 nationally in the country, number 70, D line, a three-star. And, you know, I'll say this once again, we have to trust the eval. We have to trust Bo Davis and Pete Kukowski and our defensive staff over what we see on the recruiting sites. You know, even though Melvin Hills is a three-star, even though Alex January, another D lineman that he's brought in, is a three-star, we have to trust that Bo Davis sees something that maybe 24-7 on three and rivals don't see, right? And Melvin Hills, when he committed, said that Bo Davis is going to turn me into a first-round pick. I absolutely believe that. And so he trusts, you know, the culture at the University of Texas. He trusts the development at the University of Texas. And he trusts that this is going to be a really good football team in the near future. And when we look at what Bo Davis has been able to do in terms of recruiting since 2021, I think he's left some meat on the bone. You know, I think he's brought in some good players in terms of Jare Bledsoe, Sadir Mitchell, Alex January, and Melvin Hills. But in three years in Bo Davis being at the University of Texas, it doesn't feel like we've been in the running for any of the top D linemen in the country. And that's not me saying that Jare Bledsoe, Sadir Mitchell, Alex January, or Melvin Hills won't become top D linemen. But these recruiting sites are way more accurate than we like to give them credit for. And typically those players that are uh, ranked in the top 25 or the top 50, those end up being the best players in college and typically the ones that dominate in the NFL. When you look at like a player last year, David Hicks, right? A top 10 overall player in the country, number one D lineman 
in the country, in the state of Texas. And it never even felt like Texas really had a chance. You brought in Bo Davis to bring in players like David Hicks. There's some really talented players at the top of the class this year, right, that are interior D linemen. And it feels like Texas has no shot with them or were never in their recruitment. So I want to see Bo Davis step up in that regard. You know, I've talked about the tight end recruiting, that being such an important position for us, but yet we've only been able to bring in three star tight ends since the staff has taken over. I don't think we've been that impressive in terms of what we've brought in on the interior defensive line. So I would like to see Bo Davis step up in that regard. I think this Texas football team is building something really special. And I think we should be able to bring in the top defensive linemen in the country. Maybe not right now, but when this team starts winning, that has to be a priority for this Texas football team and Bo Davis. Because when you look at going into the SEC, you're going to go against teams like Georgia and Alabama and maybe even LSU who are stockpiling five-star defensive linemen and five-star edges every season. So if you're going into a gunfight with a knife, you know, and let me knock on wood, there's no disrespect to the players, but if you're basing it off the rankings, you would be going into a gunfight with a knife. You're at a disadvantage. So like I said, I just want to see the tight end recruiting and the interior defensive lineman recruiting step up a little bit, but I do trust the staff. I trust their evals and I trust what they see in these players. And I trust that anybody who commits to the University of Texas is going to be an asset for this Texas football team. With the commitment of Melvin Hills, you are now 17th on 24-7, 17th on on three. It's crazy because there was such a discrepancy like two weeks ago. Like it was like 35th on 24-7 and like top 20 on on three. Now they're exactly the same. Don't know what happened there. And then 19th on rivals. So you know, as I said, when we were 60 something in the country, Texas had a lot more momentum than we could see on the actual recruiting sites. And that's starting to show. And you still have players like Ryan Wingo, Michael Hudson, Colin Simmons and Kobe Black, who have yet to announce where they'll be playing their college football. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Longhorns, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hook them. Peace. <laughs>